Yo, what is up, my people? It's your boy Lucha Cooney back with another video for y'all today. So, hey, I missed y'all, man. I didn't upload last week, didn't get to upload last week. So, I hope y'all are well. Hope you are doing splendid. I hope you are fighting the good fight of the faith in this crazy world that we're in. So, I saw this post recently from John Wells, better known as Tonic from Cross Movement. And in it, he describes how he Finally got to connect with Brady Goodwin, a.k.a. Fanatic, who we all know walked away from the faith earlier this year. Uh, at least the announcement came earlier this year. So he talks about how he got to connect with him in the post and a few other interesting things here for us to glean. So let's go ahead and check this out together. All right, let's check this out. So here's the post from John Wells, a.k.a. Tonic, and it reads as follows. We had not had a chance to speak since his denouncement. He was in Charlotte, so we had to connect. I asked most of the important questions I had been waiting to ask. He countered with a few of his own. I couldn't change his mind. He tried to tell me there was a moral world without God. I told him he had a brilliant mind, but that he was no match for Jesus and that I was anticipating the God of the Bible to interrupt and undermine all of his plans in ways that would be undeniable. In the end, it was all love like it should be. So here's one of the photos of Brady and John over here reconnecting. And there's some other cool pictures as well where they're just kind of hanging out, getting a meal, that sort of thing. Reconnecting with family, it seems like. So this to me was a, a really beautiful moment, I'm sure. So I think the first thing that we can observe from this is how John Wells still had an interest in Brady's life, right? He still had an interest in his well-being. He wanted to connect with him. It looks like they had been one, he at least he had been wanting to do this for a minute by the tone I get of this uh post right here. And you know, they're in different places, but when the opportunity presented itself, he took advantage of it and they connected, man. So I think the first thing we can see is we don't have to discard relationships with people who walk away from the faith. We don't have to discard relationships. Of course, there needs to be wisdom on how we navigate our interactions with people. And as you can see, it's not like they were, again, they hadn't seen each other for a long time. So it's it's not like they're connecting every day. It's not like they're just um, trying to have the same relationship that they had before. That's obviously not possible right that's not possible for them to have the same exact relationship that they had before but just the general interest and the care that john displayed here for brady i think is something that's commendable and something that we can learn from man where we don't want to discard friendships and even though those friendships will change the dynamics will change we don't want to discard friendships we don't want to um not be interested in somebody's well-being when they walk away from the faith. So the second thing I think we can observe from here is that even though John made this effort to reconnect with Brady and for them to, you know, have this opportunity to hang out during their conversation, he doesn't seem to sugarcoat anything, right? He doesn't seem to sugarcoat anything. He told him, he asked him, he says, I asked him all the questions I've been meaning to ask him. And Brady countered with some questions of his own and some thoughts. So they had a dialogue here, man. They had a dialogue. And judging by previous posts that I've seen from John and also from Amber, which we're going to take a look at uh, in, in a second here, these brothers haven't sugarcoated the severity of the situation and the severity of Brady's condition at any point in time. And I really appreciate that because I think there's, there can be a temptation to not say anything in order that we don't offend somebody. We try to maybe be more winsome. We're trying to kind of bring them back in. And we think being gentle and not saying what is true is the way to, to kind of endear them to come back into the fold, man. But honestly, if you're dealing with somebody who has this level of theological knowledge, like fanatic and has heard all, you know, a lot of explanations <laughs> for the questions he's had from very smart people, smarter than most of us, and has chosen to walk away, it's not going to be how nice you are to them that's going to bring them back. And so when we don't tell people the truth, man, and we try to sugarcoat stuff, 
we do them a great disservice, man. And we need to be honest and we need to be upfront with people, even as we do so uh, lovingly, we have to be honest with people. So let's check this clip out over here from uh, the Cross Examine podcast. Shout out to Kurt, shout out to Strack. When they had Amber on and they were discussing this issue and they had asked him the question like, so how should we regard Brady, the fanatic Goodwin, at this moment in time, how should we regard him? So this is Amber's response to that question. So again, sadly, you say, what do we do with him? Right. I say, accept, like, take him for what he, take him, take him for where, like, believe him. <laughs> but he says, I do, again, so my, my, my seminary prof used to say, don't tell me what you believed. Tell me what you're believing. He that believes is not condemned, not he who believed. And um, Brady will say, I do not believe. I don't believe in the Christian story. I don't believe in the God and father of the Lord Jesus Christ as the eternal being who created heaven and earth and interacted with a man he created and a woman he created and gave them his life and breathed his breath into them, animated them made them according to his likeness, gave them an order <laughs> to eat and enjoy him and his created order, but do not, out of submission to himself, do not eat, do not violate my word in this regard. And they did. And then plunging all who come from them <laughs> into a state of rebellion, everyone who follow, follows suit, evidencing that they are cut from the same cloth as this Adam, this first human being, this first human couple, and required God himself to redeem them from it and to die on the cross and to resurrect and to offer life to those who are dead. He says, I do not believe that. Therefore, he, according to that scriptural narrative, is in his sin. And therefore, we relate to him, Matthew 18, let him be to you as a tax collector or Gentile, which means we cannot affirm that there's anything other than he is an outsider. He is an unbeliever. So that was Amber commenting on that question of what we should do with Brady fanatic Goodwin. And this was definitely early on when this had happened, when the news had just broke out and there was a lot of people in denial. Some people were just flat out saying like, nah, it's going to be OK, sort of having a nonchalant attitude towards the situation. And Amber's words here, I mean, <laughs> he just he just broke it down, man. Like, look, we need to recognize that he's outside the faith now, man. He's outside the faith. We need to recognize that. And so. Uh, if we're in any situations that are similar to this, man, when we have people who were near and dear to us, brothers and sisters in the faith who have departed, man, we have to, in our interactions with them, even as we want to try to uh, care about them, have that interest in their lives, that sort of thing, we need to be honest with them. The third point, though, the third point I want to talk about is how we also see within this post from John Wells that he remains hopeful and i thought this was beautiful man let's check this out let's go back to the post real quick so we see in the post here after he talks about them hanging out so he mentions you know drove him to the airport and played music from an unreleased album i did in the 90s that he knew well he said he had not heard it since the 90s in some ways i could tell it spoke in ways that i couldn't jesus through and through we had a dope moment reminiscing he got out at the airport we wished each other well and he flew away despite his current beliefs one day i will fly away as well but with no need for a plane love you brady there is still room on the flight bro and then he quotes first thessalonians 4 16 18 for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the archangel's voice and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. 
Then we who are still alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so will we always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Beautiful passage, man. So just this idea here, man, where he says, you know, he got out at the airport. We wished each other well. He flew away. And the last part here, man, where he says there is still room on the flight, bro. That right there is the spirit of that. That's that hope, hopefulness I'm talking about, man. That's that hopefulness where even though there's going to be people who walk away from the faith, we can remain hopeful. We can remain even in prayer for them. And we can look, plead with the Lord to do a work in their hearts, man. Plead with the Lord to do work in their hearts, recognizing that while, while they're still alive, man, while they still have breath, man, there is still a chance for them to repent and turn to Christ, man. I personally have seen people walk away from the Lord, go out where it just looks like, man, like they're just so far gone. And the Lord do a miraculous work in their hearts, man, and bring them right back like the prodigal son, man. Bring them right back to where there's people I know now who really cleaned up their lives, ended up going to Bible college and became ministers of the Lord after walking away from God, man. And, and for a season where it just looked, wow, it looked hopeless, man. It looked hopeless, um, even lost connection with them. And then they come back, man. They come back. And so look, God is able, God is able, man. Um, and also I just want to say, man, if, if you're in a place where either you're still, you're, you're kind of discouraged by these things, or, you know, you're shaken in a way by seeing somebody, you know, walk away from the faith recently. I just want to remind you, man, that Jesus Christ remains the same, man. You know, as, as the scripture says, man, um, in, Hebrews 13, 8, you know, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, right? So Jesus remains the same. He has not lost his power. He has not lost his ability to um, not lose a single one. We are still unsnatchable in his hands. No one can pluck us out of his hands if we are truly his. And so take heart, man, take heart. Don't be discouraged. Definitely get with people who can pray with you. Get with, uh, talk to your pastors about this. Talk to other people in the faith who you know are uh, prayer warriors, man. Get get with folks who can encourage you, man. And just recognize that um, there are answers to tough questions. There are um, seasons where we're going to feel defeated. But man, in the end, it's, it's going to be all worth it, man. It's going to be all worth it. So so just, just keep fighting. Keep fighting, man. I just want to encourage you to keep going. Remember that the faith walk is a marathon, not a sprint. And you are just in one part of your journey right now. And the Lord is able to take you out of this valley and bring you back up to the higher parts, the peaks where you can see that beautiful sunshine and recognize and remember who he is and his goodness, man. And don't stop praising him. Don't stop praising him and thanking him just for giving you life, just for waking you up today. And the fact that you're still here, don't forget, don't forget that you are blessed. Don't forget that. And don't forget that you belong to Jesus Christ. So I'm actually going to leave y'all with this clip right here from a video that John Wells had posted earlier on when the news had broke. And he just reminds us here that we belong to Jesus in this clip. So I wanted to leave y'all with that. And thanks for watching today, man. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Leave a comment, share, all that good stuff, all right? And if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, all right? God bless y'all. I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, I know it's hard and... But be encouraged. Second point I want to make, maybe only three points. The second one I want to say is, unfortunately, the place that Brady is right now, he wants to walk you through some stuff and cause doubt 
I don't think he's meaning to injure people. He just is in a place where he doesn't realize the damage that's being done. But he wants to, he wants you too to doubt. He wants you too to um, come along with him. Like, I'll tell you like I told him. He can't have you. He can't have y'all. Y'all belong to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Thank you.